Hi everybody, just a short video today, actually the first probably in a series of maybe four that we're going to take a look at. Uh, it's going to show us some different ways that we can be maybe more productive when working with geospatial data. So in other words, what I'd like to do is bring some uh, shapefile or other geospatial information into my model here. Currently I'm just looking at an aerial photo of a uh, subdivision in an area that I'm interested in and I've got some parcel data and I'd like to look at some ways that I could uh, maybe improve the process of bringing that data in so that it's in a more complete state than what I would get otherwise. So let me explain. First let's bring in some some shape information. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a folder here and here is my shape data that contains my parcels. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that because it can exist within my model. I'm gonna drag and drop the parcels will automatically be brought in, transformed to the appropriate project projection if need be, and then displayed on my screen. Now once they're displayed on the screen, they are brought in in a default um, style or, or display representation that I can go in and modify if need be. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on what's called the map task pane, or the command is M, uh, map W space to turn that on. We'll turn that on and we can see our geospatial data represented here. Now if I'd like to change this, and in most cases you probably will, I can go through and, and tweak this by double clicking on the style and then looking at the different aspects of it. We're just going to focus on not necessarily a scale range or anything like that today. We're just going to focus on the style itself. We've got two main components. We can control how it's going to be displayed. We can also control whether or not it's got any annotation associated with it. So if I'd like to change how it's displayed, I'm going to double pick on the green box here. That will expand that and then we can go through and make some changes. So right now it's got a black border outline with a green fill. So the black border outline, I'll maybe come down and set that to blue. And maybe we'll make that a blue uh, dashed line, hidden line. We'll come down and set that to uh, hidden X2. Notice as we make changes, it's automatically showing it to us in the preview in the window. We'll come down to the fill. I'm going to set that to a uh, color blue as well. And then what I'm going to do is in the transparency window here, I'm just going to click and hold with my left mouse uh, button and then we'll drag to the right to get the appropriate transparency that we're looking for. We'll click on apply and it will apply that. I can see what it looks like. We'd like to tweak it maybe a little bit more. Increase the transparency. We'll click on apply. Uh, we'll go ahead and close. We zoom up and take a look at that. We can see our parcel information. Now the dash line isn't necessarily um, coming out as well as what I'd like. I'd maybe like to make that stand out a little bit more. What we can do is we're not limited to just one border and one fill. We can add more to uh, adjust the representation to meet the specific needs of what we're, what we're trying to show. So let's come back. We'll double pick on that style. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, uh, an additional border layer to our style. It's going to put that down at the bottom here. So if I scroll down, you can see there's a new one that was created. Uh, let's go ahead and make that color white. So we'll go ahead and select that white and let's give that a width of maybe three. We can see the display in the window hasn't updated at all from what we were looking at before. And the reason is because there's a draw order associated with these. So the fact that my wide lines on the bottom, we can't see it actually it'd probably be hanging out the top here a little bit, but it's being cropped by the window. So I'm going to select this. We'll move it up one. Now we can see that. Let's go ahead and grab this. I'm going to adjust my transparency here a little bit more. Try and lighten that up just a touch. Maybe even grab a little lighter fill. That, that's a little, uh, little too dark for me. There we go. Let's go ahead and apply that. Okay, much better. It's a more of a, a subtle, subtle transparency now. Let's maybe drop that down just a touch. We'll say okay. All right. I'll go ahead and close out of that. So I've got a, a dash blue line with a, a white border around it. All right. Now you'll notice as I zoom in, the dashes and the white border don't get any uh, change representation with my scale. 
So no matter what my display representation is, those lines remain exactly the same width. That may create the effect that we're interested in when we're working in our model, but it may also create a situation where if we back up too much, the, uh, the border or the display representation doesn't quite look the way that we would like it to or the way that folks would expect. So depending on how we would like to use it, we also have some controls that we can adjust so that the, the representation isn't based on our display, but instead but, uh, based on our map. So let's come back to the style editor here, take a quick look at that. If I expand that, that information's up here at the top. So we're gonna go ahead and set it to map. Now, because my model's in feet, I'm gonna go ahead and set my, my information uh, or my units here instead of mil, uh, millimeters, we'll set that to feet. We'll start at the dash line here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the, uh, the width. There might be some predefined ones in here that we'll select or I can, I can add my own. So we'll go ahead and select in the box here. I'm going to set my uh, width to 6. That's going to be the width of my dash. And then I'm going to click on Advanced here. I'd like it to repeat uh, every 8 feet or every 8 units. We'll go ahead and click on Apply. That uh, updates my, uh, my dash. The other thing that I'm going to do is we'll take a look at the white line here. Let's uh, click, in, click in the map. We'll click on Close. Let's zoom in and see what that white line's doing. All right, my, my dashes are working, but on my width of my white line is not working the way that I'd like. So let's come back, double pick on that. We'll come back to the white line for the border. We'll come down and the, uh, the width on that guy, we'll take and set that now to three. Now, sometimes when we set these and it's, it's the map unit is set to feet, the preview I've noticed doesn't always display exactly the way that we would expect, but that's all right. If we click on apply, it should still update on the screen correctly. And now you'll notice that I, I have essentially the same display representation we had before. However, now my line work in that is consistent with the geometry. And that is a, if I zoom in, it actually gets wider. All right, so that as I back up, you know, it would operate more like what I would expect it to on a map if we were closer or further away. All right, so pretty easy to do. Last thing I'd like to do is I'd like to show that we could add a feature label to this or some annotation. So uh, using the same information here, rather than having numbers getting bigger or smaller, we'll just use map as well. I'm going to set this to feet, add a label. I've got an attribute in... Uh, a GIS attribute that is in my geospatial data here that we will, instead of using static text, I'm going to set it to area. Set it, that is the area of this particular parcel. We're going to set it uh, maybe to have a unit uh, height of four feet. I could go through and I can underline, bold, overscore, number of different things. We'll just keep it simple for right now. I will, however, change the color maybe to be yellow so it stands out a little bit better against the darker background. Let's go ahead and we'll click on apply. We'll say close and I'm going to close this box now. And as we, uh, we come in here and zoom up and take a look at these, we can see that the area for that particular parcel is displayed in the parcel itself. And uh, as we look at that, if we uh, pan and zoom, uh, the numbers don't, uh, don't move. They don't uh, appear or disappear. They act more like what we would expect M text to act. All right. Now, I've gone through, we could argue and spent, you know, a few minutes adding information to this. If I'd like to use this same data in another file, what I could do rather than go through and having to reset what was my line width, what did I use for spacing, how did I get it to come out looking like this, what we can do, we can save a uh, data layer, if you will, from our map task pane. I can right click on this and we're going to go ahead and our, our tool for today is going to be save layer. So now that I've set up my representation the way that I would like it, if I would like to reuse this or have other folks reuse it and come up with the same display representation, we can save that layer. I'm going to put it in my uh, Tuesday folder here and we'll call it uh, Tuesday. We'll call it parcels. We'll say save. All right, we've saved that information. Let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to close out of this file. We're not going to save any of our changes. We're then going to open that file up again. Let's say that I'm somebody else in a different part of the office. I've got uh, a file that I would, uh, same projection, maybe a different one, utilizing the same area. 
I would like to now bring in my parcel data and have it represented using my standards, which maybe we've established in the last file, instead of bringing in a shape file like we did before, and then setting all of those particular values. What I could do is we could come in, go to my desktop here, we'll grab Tuesday, we'll grab our Tuesday parcels data layer, if you will. I'm going to click and hold on that, drag it into my model. When I let go, it automatically adds that information. We'll zoom up and take a look at that. We see that it's already got my settings set for the uh, uh, border width for my white line, the dash line, and then also my area. All right, so uh, two quick things. First, I'm sure a lot of folks are looking at the, uh, the area and saying, look, I really don't need areas to 10 decimal places. I'm going to show you a way that we can tweak that in the next video. Uh, however, uh, the other thing that I would mention is from a data layer or our tool for today is if we're using a lot of geospatial files and we find that when we bring those in, we're doing some formatting to control its display representation on the screen. We can uh, control that very quickly by capturing that in a data layer through our map task pane such that we can drag and drop it in any other model. It will automatically reproject on the fly and, and give us that representation without having to go through and reinvent the wheel a second time. So hopefully this is helpful. I look forward to talking to you again in the next video where we will look at how to adjust our annotation for our areas such that they are not to 10 decimal places. See ya.